What is going on guys and welcome back to the series where I'm learning Planet Coaster by basically building various different types of coasters in the game and having done a lot within this park even since this episode like like I'm recording these vo voiceovers like excuse me I already have let me count there's one two three four five I believe six coasters in this park at the current moment and of course there is a separate video for all of them just like this one where it's fast paced showing how I build it and I also have a project planned where I took some very very amazing shots that came out of this project even though this is just my first you know sort of sandbox park where I'm building this coast these coasters they came out really really beautiful and I called it planet coaster on console is beautiful or on next gen is beautiful I have that project edited and ready to go but that's gonna be released of course after all of these videos showcasing how we made it so today I am building a B&M Enver and just like this wooden coaster I'm gonna say this is probably my favorite or not favorite like as in smoothness but best looking coaster when it comes to the end of everything this this is just very definitely very showcased in that video i was talking about it looks absolutely amazing when you finish with the trees and everything and really it just i like how smooth it goes through the whole layout the first half you're really going to see is inspired by banshee and just looking at it from the off-ride pov from certain angles and just listening to the roar that's in the game i feel like i'm at king's island listening to banshee and watching it off-ride which is amazing considering covid even though i was able to go to king's island so the main part of this invert and i'm going to be honest this is the longest part of the video is me trying to figure out this drop once i figure out the drop everything seems to go pretty smoothly after that so I'm not going to keep talking as much as I always do in these in these videos. At some points, you know, I just want to start to be quiet and just, you know, let you guys watch the building process, especially because this is me trying to get the drop correct. And this takes a few goes. And you're going to see me riding it a lot. The catwalks is, are really pretty in this, but I wish that they would just cut down on maybe on the supports a little bit. So I'm just going to, you know, be quiet while I go ahead and try to figure out this drop a little. Oh, one other thing that I forgot to mention is that there, the glitch that I don't know if you guys have seen my previous episodes. I think it happened when I was building the arrow. The glitch when you select certain pre-made, um, what is it called, inversions. The glitch that happens when you select some of those and it goes underground where it freezes your game and you are, excuse me, I didn't mean to hit the table. And you are unable to do anything after that and you literally have to back out of the game and go back in. That glitch happens very frequently in this. So I'll speak more about that when it happens. So I'm gonna try to use a smoothening tool just to see if I can see if I can make what I have shaped work. But really, like I said, when I make coasters, even though I have been using way more scenery than I'm used to, even though that is just placing trees, I like to make sure that they're they're realistic in their smoothness and like just just how they would look overall. Even though in Planet Coaster and you're gonna see on a lot of these coasters, I end up losing that just in some aspects because I just don't feel like fixing it. But the smoothing tool in this does work very well. And I did not mean to tweak that. So I ended up having to do the, redo that whole section just because it was banked really weird just at that top section. I know that's supposed to be straight and then I just I really want to make that look as accurate as I can be. I really I regret I should have just done like a banshee drop where it goes straight into it, but I want to try to make this as realistic as I can. 
And I, I ended up trying to make like more like an afterburn drop instead of a banshee style. And I am going to say that I don't end up leaving it white. I end up making it more like a, um, not flight deck, but a silver bullet color steam at the end. But I do think I leave it white for a majority of the video. So here I am going to test it. Hopefully this, hopefully this is it. I know, like I said, most of this struggle is me trying to figure out this drop. But once I get the drop, it's actually pretty good. That's actually not too bad. I think that that's pretty close to what it, it ends up looking like. Yep, so it looks like I'm satisfied with that. So like I said, I end up trying to make Banshee in the first half. So right after that, I go right into the Emmelman. And I end up watching this a lot, smoothing that transition out, trying to make sure that it goes through it at the perfect speed. Or at least at least a realistic speed. Some, some of these end up being slow and some of them end up being fast. Not even in this ghost or just throughout this entire experience but I really feel like I did a great job for this this first part it, it feels so much like Banshee just watching it to me so because I was sped up I'm honestly not sure if it was too fast or too slow but honestly it wasn't make, going through at my liking and I also end up having to tweak it because I want to make sure that it goes over the lift hill where the lift hill is still decently tall. Like at the end of that, I was all the way basically at the base of the lift hill. So having the loop go over the hill wouldn't have been anything special. And then this is the next biggest struggle is trying to figure out how to get the loop to, to work over the hill and be the perfect size. And the main way you see me changing that is just basically changing how long that piece of track that is the transition right over it goes. And I do think I end up getting it pretty close, but obviously it's not perfect. And then you can see I've gotten pretty good with using the speed controls in the game. It's just on Xbox it's hold X and then you push up on the D-pad. I actually found this pretty useful and I'm getting very good at it. At first I couldn't figure it out but now I'm actually getting pretty good at it. And I'm going to make the emblem in a little bit bigger to make that make it better. And then I think I, I almost have the same issue where, where I'm close to the base of the lift hill. Which is not what I want. And maybe that glitch, or maybe that wasn't this video where that glitch happened a lot. Sorry, I've, I've been doing a lot in this park. And, and when I get on a roll with this, I just, I get on a roll of recording the videos. Because once I have the videos recorded, I know that at least that's a step in making the videos completed. So I end up making this piece of track shorter so that I can make the Emmelman fit perfectly over the lift. Or the loop fit perfectly over the lift. And there it is. I end up trying to tilt it back towards the loop a little bit to, so that it doesn't go towards the base of the lift. It goes towards sort of where it goes higher up. And that looked pretty good, but I think I'm going to end up modifying a little bit more. Once I get these first inversions, and like I said, the drop was the main part, but me figuring out how to get this loop going over the, over the lift hole just because I wanted to make that as perfect as I can. That's the hard part about this. And yeah, that transition was looking pretty wonky to me, even again, just watching it. So I had to make sure I smooth that one out, and I'm going to smooth that transition out, obviously. And then we're going to go ahead and smooth the entire drop out. And then just this tiny piece on the top so that it's not, it's not too wonky. And then we're just going to ride it just to see how it rides the first few loops, or the first few inversions.
there's gonna be some gray hang time on those inversions just like on banshee on a slow day or even on a on a good day sometimes but continuing like banshee i end up putting a zero g roll right after this and this is actually where the similarities with banshee end I end up getting inspired by Montu, and oh, I guess I didn't have that flip towards the base of the lift, so I end up fixing that. And then just making sure that it goes through how I want after I made that choice. And then the next inversion is going to be the 0G roll. When I can find it. There's some, there's some really weird inversions. And there it is. That, and that looks more like Banshees and less like Raptors. I tried to look for a version that looked like Raptors, and I couldn't find it. So I was like, okay, I'll just use this one instead of having to make a pre-made one. And it also has that really, really steep buildup. Like I said, there's some really, really wonky ones. But it goes straight from, like, flat to going to that steep buildup. So this is where you see me trying to find Banshees a little bit. All right, yeah, excuse me. This is where you see me trying to flatten that out a little bit. And then even, even just watching it and how I build this and seeing how nice it looks in the end. This is just so nice. So I end up taking a page out of Montu's book, which is the very intense book. And I was seeing if they had this pre-built. They have the pretzel loop built. So if I wanted to make like an actual Banshee recreation, I could. But I end up not doing that in this one. And I end up, it's not called the bow tie. And it's not the pretzel loop. But I can't think of it right now. It's where there's the dive loop to the left and then the M woman out. Just like that. And it's extremely intense on Montu. Now on this one, I don't end up making it like extremely intense. I want to make it realistic, but I do think I do a good job of balancing the realism with the intensity. And just seeing the sunset in the coaster, just the fact that this is all on console is is such a nice perk, and we and I really appreciate the developers at Planet Coaster from from making this on console. And that, that gap was a little bit too wide, so I wanted to make it a little smaller. And that doesn't even make it, so I have to redo that. So while I'm going, I just I basically how how it ends up looking so nice in the end, I want you to imagine like a tree line basically halfway up that zero G roll. So if you're walking from the path, you only see it going up. And through that zero G roll, and it is it is such a beautiful experience, and I can't wait till you guys can see it at the end of the vid of this video, until you see some of the beautiful off ride shots that I captured. So first, I'm thinking maybe I wanted to do like a helix, and maybe I could do a mid course like that, and then I didn't like how it went through. So that's not going to work because the mid course would be right above the dive loop, and I don't like how that looks. Now, I also want to mention that somebody did point out that I can control the friction, which was a complaint in my last video, and I really appreciate that because I figured it out, and I do know how to come, I do know how to use it to my advantage, but I do not end up doing that in any of these next few videos. But I plan on doing that in the sandbox. So that'll be, actually be very, very useful. So, like realism, of course, you want the second part of the inversion to be a little bit smaller so that it makes it through at the same speed as the first and then so much of this is just me testing it and watching if I, if I showed all of this not in in fast motion just me testing it, it would just this video would already be way longer than this what than it already was the last video was an hour and like 10 minutes of footage this one is an hour and 30 so that's why it, hopefully it'll be worth it So I actually think that would end up that would end up being too bad if I placed it right there, but again it goes right over it. So I just I, I don't think that would end up being where I wanted it. Plus I'm gonna end up going to the right and having a corkscrew and then turning back in to the station, which I take another page out of Banshee's book. And but the corkscrew is not on on a Banshee's book. It's out of Raptors or like any other invert that has one of those fast paced corkscrews. So really a mix up of of uh, rides in this and I'm thinking I've wanted to maybe build my um, 
I wanted to maybe start my Let's Play Sandbox after after I finished voicing over all these episodes, but I want to do an Intamin Giga because I'm planning on doing sort of like a Fury 325 thing for my sandbox where I know that it's, it's going to like go really fast past the entrance. Like I, I want to have a nice entrance with a B&M Giga. So I feel like if I made an Intamin Giga in this, it would just, it would be a really cool episode to make. And I'm thinking of like making a mix between Millennium and Intimidator, sort of like how this is a mix between Montu and, um, and uh, Banshee. So there's so many ideas, and the fact that you can just do all of this on console, and my PC would have been crashing, man, especially with all the trees, and when, when, just going through and looking and watching how smooth it runs, my computer would not have been able to do this at all. So I end up turning to, to the left here. I think it's actually like the opposite direction for the track. But turning up and into sort of like a little mid course, and in this video, I end up I forget to turn on the catwalks so it doesn't look as nice as it normally was. But trust me, I end up fixing that eventually. So that's a little bit too high. Again, it, it goes literally right through the mid course, so I feel like that's a really nice effect, or not through it, but the drop goes through the mid course or through, not the mid course. Excuse me, through the zero G roll. Again, these live comms are just me me here sitting for 30 or 20 minutes, however long the video is even when sped up. So I always like to do like a small section of friction breaks and then the block break after that just so that it slows it down and then like I get the actual breaks where it carries through. And this, this mid course doesn't slow the ride down at all. I know a lot of the enthusiasts are going to like that about this. A lot of my mid courses that I, I've built don't do that. I, if you watch the wooden coaster episode, especially because that one is, is supposed to mimic a uh, ghost rider, even though that one doesn't have the mid course, they really just don't slow it down as they go through the mid courses, even though I placed one on that ride. All right. So I think I like how that mid course goes. And I, again, I'm, I'm probably going to end up making sure that it, it not flies through it, but it doesn't slow down. And, and make the coaster enthusiast mad. So I end up placing a pre-built corkscrew after this. After smoothing out this drop just to make sure it's as good as possible. We are in the home stretch, trust me. And after you see all, all the scenery placing and everything, trust me, this is going to be worth it. Or at least for me. I, I hope you guys like it too, but... The fact that all this can be done on console has just been the most amazing experience for me, and I really enjoy making these episodes, and I hope those of you who are watching are enjoying watching them. So that slowed it down a little bit, so I'm going to tweak that mid-course so it doesn't do that as much. After smoothing out that transition a little bit. I just looked away. I'm not exactly sure why I decided to build the whole mid course. Maybe because it was slanted or, or it wasn't going exactly where I wanted it to. Or maybe because I thought maybe it was going a little bit too fast, even though it does end up going pretty fast through this. And that one, I don't like how it's angled too much because it ends up going too close to the front of that zero G roll or the back end of it. Wow, I'm surprised me seeing that catwalk there didn't remind me 
to put it on, especially because it looks so much better with it on. But like I said, after that drop, well, I, I smoothed out that drop and end up still end up redoing it. And I can't wait till I change the colors, even though this white color scheme, like, does look pretty cool, like Nemesis. So I build a, the smallest corkscrew that I can because, I'm like I said, I didn't have the custom friction built, so we're still going with slow planet coaster friction. Not sure. <laughs> I don't know why I can't finish the corkscrew there. But I end up making this a little bit longer just so I make sure I get, can get as close to the ground as I can so I get as much speed going into that core screen to make it as realistic as possible. And again, smoothing out that transition, watching that. Then smoothing it out again for some reason. And redoing the whole drop again. <laughs> I guess I'm being really thorough, but but I, I could turn on my Xbox and go look at this right now and just just be amazed by how, how good it looks on this console version. So it'll be worth it in the end. So re-putting our corkscrew back in, I end up doing a little bit of a helix sort of thing. And then you guys know if you've seen my other videos, I like to sort of plan out the block break out of the station and the friction break that goes into it. Just so I know, just so I get a better reference point of where I'm going to have to tie off and a longer reference point of where to tie off. And I end up having a long break run, but not too long of a friction break because with Planet Coaster Friction, I, and I can sort of see that the coaster is already dying off a little bit, so we don't need that there. Do I even put the catwalks on the brakes? And then I end up trying to use the pre-built inline twist, and for some reason, I could not find what I was looking for. Like I could not find a good inline twist. So you're going to see me struggling to find it for a while, and after all of this, I end up just having to, to profile my own with the banking, which when I was doing on PC, I remember trying to make my own inversion and not being able to, so the fact that that's now a thing that can, that can be done is amazing. So that's not the right, and it's just weird. They all either end up in the wrong like location, or it, it just doesn't make sense. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my own. It just it's supposed to be pretty long and drawn out because of the hang time on it but not too long and drawn out so like I said I end up making all of that so that I know where to tie off from and now I basically just have the job of making this curve around and then turn back into it in a way that makes it look good and realistic like you're gonna get some force on this helix obviously just like most B&M inverts right after this just have to get the perfect height And tightness and then so I'm gonna switch that there then reverse the banking and do the turn and we should get a pretty close linkage now this is gonna need some major smoothening I can already see as soon as I can connect it for some reason like sometimes it works smoothly and sometimes it doesn't when I end up trying to trying to connect them at the end So I'm going to redo it one more time just to see if I can get a closer point so that it might actually connect. There, that'll give me a little bit more space going in if I do it like that. And then there we go. So I'm going to smooth out that inversion, of course, because I want it to be like, it doesn't end up being completely smooth as you'll see in the POV, but... I want it to be as smooth as a rotation on that inline twist as possible. And just just looking at it from the side to see how that inline twist looks. Just gonna smooth out this helix. And for some reason I'm redoing things again. <laughs> Trying to connect it there. 
And there it goes. So I'm going to smooth out that junction again. And we should be close to tree and or tree slash scenery placement. So here is just a quick like sped up POV of me just watching it to see how it runs without placing the trees. Now I know this is still this is still the pedal, sped up POV and and I hope that if you guys have made it to this point in the video, you're still listening to the live com, you're still seeing how it's built, and you haven't seen like the actual POV or haven't skipped to land, I appreciate you for watching this video. Or maybe you did see the POV, but you're coming back and watching it again. I appreciate you for watching this point in the video, but we're so close to finishing this ride and getting the actual POV with all the trees. And I just, I'm so proud of how this came out, mainly because this is, this is only like my third or fourth coaster, and wow that that needs some tweaking i've been doing this live comp so long my computer just went dark all right so again i'm gonna try to smooth that out and i and i try to get it the best that i can And you just see me tweaking the brakes, trying to get it so that it goes in the station as like as as most of a realistic speed as I can. Watching it go into the brake run to see that that like making sure that it stops. And I don't know why, but like that's just what I focus on. Like if the brake run's not realistic, I don't like. Like you see here, for some reason I only had the block brake, so I didn't have a block brake and then the friction brake like I had voiced over. And and I know that's my intention, so I'm gonna fix that. And now it should be fixed. So I'm just watching it go a little bit. And I don't think I put the, I actually don't think I put the um, the catwalks on the brake. I'll have to check that when I go back and play and see if they're actually there. Cause I don't know, I don't think that they are now that I'm thinking about it. I ended up placing them on the mid course, but still don't have them on the main brake. So this coaster is beautiful, but could still it could still look even better. All right, so finally, I'm changing it to a block section mode. I'm adjusting the cars so that they're as long as I like. I feel like nine is weird, and I was thinking about it. I was like, how many rows are in Banshee Station? I was like, I think there's eight, so I'm going to make it eight cars. Hopefully, I go and adjust the colors. Even though, like I said, this white isn't bad. It's just it's so weird seeing it in this, knowing how it looks right now. So I'm just watching it test, making sure everything goes smoothly, and finally I'm changing the colors. So like I said, it was really inspired by Silver Bullet. I kept the ties, or the actual rails, uh, yellow. I didn't even mean to make the brakes and all that stuff red. That'd actually be cool if those were yellow. I might go back and change that. But I really like how that catwalk looks, and I'm actually ashamed that I didn't put that on the mid-course. I don't mean to keep hitting my desk. The mid-course or the main brake. But I think I ended up just, I, I fiddled with some colors on the supports, and I, if this is the one I end up going with, then, then it still ends up turning pretty nice. But I'm going to speed through this tree placement. You guys have obviously seen me place the trees, and there's my dog.
But with that, I am going to end off on like a panoramic view on this this little flower ride that I've placed in the park. I think it gives a really, really nice view of how nice this looks on console and how nice this coaster is. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. I think, what's next? Is it the dive coaster? I think the dive coaster might be next.